So all I did was write a letter to those of you unversed in the mind and mischief, that is Brenda, that may sound innocent enough, but when you are a black woman in white America, the wrong letter at the wrong time can wreak havoc apparently. When a letter feels like an admonishment or an indictment of wrongdoing to the powers that be, there's no such thing as just a letter. Being perfectly aware of this, I decided that I needed to simmer down a little bit and pray on whether or not this letter was the right decision. So I typed it up, I printed it out, I flipped it upside down and slid it under my keyboard because I could expect my privacy to be respected, right? Well, apparently not so much. So this supervisor brings me a letter and tells me that it was found under the keyboard of an employee that basically they feel like is a resignation letter. By the time it gets to me, the team leads, supervisors, manager, and director have all read it and concur it's a letter of resignation. Well, no it's not because she didn't give it to you, you took it. And shall we read what it says in this letter because she isn't wrong. I know most of them are single mothers. There was no way that this was gonna be possible. Giving people absolutely no time to figure out childcare? How dare they be so careless about my life? You see they, yes I say they, because had I been involved in this process, it would not have happened this way. They were gonna roll out a new schedule on Thursday, effective Monday, and the schedule sucked. I asked them to take everything in that letter to heart because she was speaking for nearly everyone in there. They never once took into consideration how negatively it would impact the people they were forcing it on. Oh, and they got to keep coming in nine to five. And then we had interviews for team leads. The powers that be sit around a table and interrogate. It's intimidating, but I digress. She had a great interview, scores were great, but they bring up the letter. I'm reminded, I reminded them of the legality of holding that against her, but they don't care. She's blackballed. And trust me, the, flat, the fact that it's called blackballed doesn't go unnoticed by me. So I got the email that said, thank you for applying, but, always that but. I didn't even read the rest. I, it wasn't even worth the time or the effort. I already knew what this was. I've been blackballed. Blackballed, blacklisted, black silenced. I have made them too uncomfortable. My words have been too potent. My voice had been too black. So fast forward 10 years later, that letter writer and I were sitting together writing a press release for the business we opened together in downtown Akron. Our paths had us weaving in and out of each other's lives through several, several times throughout those 10 years, but we found ourselves in a place of complete alignment. We were going to change the world together. So joining forces in this business meant that we needed to be closer than ever. Having a successful partnership meant that we would be spending what to normal people might be an obscene amount of time together, but we never said that we were normal. <laughs> Late nights at the office turned into a deep dive of life experiences, and we began to slowly toss the occasional race-related inquiry out to, to one another. And as y'all can tell, I can be a bit of an envelope pusher. So things broke wide open when I found out that Kat's grandparents met picking cotton. How could I resist? No, really, how could I resist? <laughs> so she showed me this beautiful pic of her amazing family and I asked, are you missing the irony of the fact that of the two of us, your grandparents are the two who met picking cotton? Remember that time that someone dropped off a check at the office and it was addressed to Katrina, but they handed it to you because you must be the Katrina of the two of us? Or remember that time that you told me that what we call soul food, your family calls garden dinner? Remember the time that I ho overheard you tell your son not to wear his hoodie up while he was walking home from school and they couldn't understand why? <clears throat> so you see this lighthearted banter, e I'm sorry, um, eventually became meaningful and intentional conversations where we use the term no filter that helps us remove all pretenses on both sides. No longer was Kat just a white woman in America and no longer was Brenda just a black woman in America. We were now two humans borrowing the lens of another human whose skin just happens to be a different color. So I'm a bit of a brain junkie and I'd heard about this part of our brain called the reticular activating system. The RAS is basically our brain's way of scanning our environment to prove to ourselves that whatever we believe to be true must be true. And this can cause our lenses to become clouded if we're not careful. 
So how can you challenge your lens? Well, if the only people in your Facebook news feed think and feel like you do, how does that challenge your lens? If the news outlets that you watch only confirm your thoughts and beliefs, how does that challenge your lens? So yes, I hate to break it to you, but you have to watch Fox News sometimes. <laughs> we need to challenge ourselves. Staying inside our comfort zone will keep us divided as a country, as humans. Will you always be right inside your comfort zone? You betcha, but you will not grow, not even a little. We need to have more no filter conversations where we're not trying to win, but truly trying to understand and not defend. Another way that society perpetuates divisiveness is by buying into rhetoric such as, why is there a black entertainment, a, a black history month and not a white history month? Or why did Bill Cosby go to jail way before Harvey Weinstein went to jail? Or why is there a BET and not a WET? Well, there is, y'all just call it FOX. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we know that some of the things we just said were probably triggers for some of you, and that's okay. We need to lean into those triggers and acknowledge the defensiveness that just came up. Feeling defensive is our body's way of showing us that we have an opportunity to be inquisitive or curious. And it's in this space that we can start to make our unconscious biases more conscious and then begin to challenge them. Get honest with ourselves about biases, stereotypes, and generalizations. <laughs> begin to view one another as individual people with individual experiences whose lives are actually impacted in similar ways. And at the end of the day, we are all just people who want to be loved. And respected. And heard. We honor our differences. Different does not have to be divided because we know we're better, better together. together. <laughs>